There ain't no freaking tax in tax free. Now, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how I can reduce taxes, especially during retirement. Put your seatbelt on. I'm in my studio here and I'm going to share with you a joke that will help you understand how important it is to choose tax favored vehicles when you're saving. I'm Doug Andrew. I happen to be in my studio right now. I've been blessed to have a national radio show for, uh, this is my 12th year, but I love educating people like you. Do you know I let all my professional licenses automatically expire the last business day of 2005 to become a consumer advocate? So this is about you, and I want to share with you what I wrote an article uh, titled The Big Tax Surprise several years ago. It was published in several new newspapers and magazines. But I want to start out by sharing a little joke with you that my kids uh, absolutely love me to tell, okay? One day, this guy goes into a hamburger drive-in and he says to a little gal there helping, I'd like a, a hamburger, a shake, and a large order of french fries. And she goes, well, I'm sorry, sir, we're out of french fries. He goes, oh, well then uh, give me a hamburger, a shake, and a, and a medium order of french fries. She goes, um, sir, I, I'm sorry, we're out of french fries. Oh, he goes, uh, well then just give me a hamburger shake and a small order of french fries. She goes, sir, can I ask you uh, a couple of questions? He goes, yeah, go ahead. She said, who put the straw in strawberry? He thought for a second, he goes, I guess our creator did that, okay. Who put the ape in grape? He goes, I guess our creator did that too. She said, well, who put the freak in French fries? And he thought for a second, he goes, there ain't no freaking French fries. She goes, I know, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Now, I tell that joke because uh, you wouldn't believe how many times I have aired in this studio, talk to people about my favorite vehicle, which I call the Laser Fund, and it's totally tax-free. And uh, it's not just tax-deferred, it's tax-free. And I'll run into people. One day, I was uh, looking at some log furniture for my uh, cabin. And I go in there, and this clerk, uh, and he's like uh, an hour away from where my office is, and he, he, they could tell my voice, they're in the store. And he goes, you're the guy on the radio. I go, yep. And the first thing he asks is what many people ask. So is that really tax free? <laughs> I go, no, you know, I've been kidding for 46 years now. I, it's, it's really not tax free. I've just been saying that. <laughs> it's like there ain't no freaking tax in tax free. So yeah, it really is tax free. So what's my favorite vehicle? You know, a lot of times people will set aside money in different financial instruments. So let me go through four of the most common places people put money and why this big tax surprise sometimes takes uh, people not only by surprise, but it, it makes them change their whole lifestyle. They don't have as much money as they thought they would have during retirement. So I've noticed that many, many people in America will uh, set aside money in different vehicles. So there's four typical places, I call them buckets, where people draw from in retirement. But when most people came to me as a financial strategist, a retirement planning specialist, they were way too top heavy in the yet to be taxed. Um, IRAs and 401ks are typical places that are tax deferred. And so they haven't been taxed yet. And it was in the market and uh, they would have 80, 90, maybe 100% of their retirement savings trapped in that tax trap. And then when they hit retirement, there was this big surprise. They thought they had a million bucks, let's say, that was their money. And they, I go, no, 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 no. Uh, I wanted you to bring your after-tax uh, IRA or 401k statements. My after-tax statements, they would go. I go, oh, you don't have those? Uh, uh, very typical. Let me calculate it for you. So then I would simply show them that million bucks in your IRA or 401k isn't all your money. See, the government has a permanent tax lien of usually 25 to 33, up to 40 percent if you live in California, for example. So that million is not your money. Only 600,000 or 700,000 of that is your money. The rest belongs to the government. So if you pull out $150,000 a year, you're going to pay tax of a third of that, 50,000 to net 100,000. Now, 
I prefer a tax-free bucket. The taxed uh, deferred bucket, the, the one where people put money in the market, that is not where you should have your money during retirement. And too many times people get in this tax trap. Now, there is also the real estate bucket. And sometimes people get real estate income, rental income, but you have to pay tax on that. That's offset hopefully by depreciation and by the mortgage interest that you're deducting if you have a mortgage on a non-owner occupied rental income property. But uh, what you're doing is you're deferring. And then if you ever sell that property, because most people don't want to be landlords and take out trash and fix toilets and evict tenants during their retirement. And so they either hire a property manager that doesn't do as good a job as they did, or they sell and then they have to pay the capital gain. But if they don't want to pay capital gains tax, they do 1031 exchanges and they just inherit a new headache. People get into these dilemmas, uh, but real estate, maybe up to 30% of your income could come from there. I would say no more than 30% of your income should be in the market. Uh, some people like guaranteed income. That's the third bucket is money in guaranteed places, maybe social security or a defined benefit pension, maybe an annuity that guarantees an income for life, no matter how long you live. But uh, I like the fourth bucket and it's the tax free one. And it's what I call the laser fund because it's totally tax free. And uh, there is no freaking tax in tax free when I talk about this. So what does all this mean? Let me simplify it mathematically because I would rather have like 40, 50, 60% uh, more if I could, but you can't put all your money into the laser fund because of certain restrictions, certain hoops you have to jump through in order to grandfather yourself in the Internal Revenue Code, so to speak, to be able to have tax-free income. In fact, it takes about four years in one day, five uh, relatively equal installments in what I call the laser fund to qualify to have tax-free income forever after. So we're specialists in this. I've been doing this for 46, uh, going on 47 years now. And so the laser fund, I, I wrote a book by that title, I would love for you to get a free copy and you can watch this next video that I'm going to recommend to um, see how you can get a free copy of that book. But let's talk about tax free. There are three sections of the Internal Revenue Code that have been around since before the code. In fact, currently they are sections 72E, 7702 and section 101A of the Internal Revenue Code. I teach advanced continuing education to many CPAs, thousands of them, and tax attorneys because they're not taught these sections of the code in depth in, in order to uh, become a CPA or to have an LLM degree, which is a master's in taxation. Can you believe that? And so they come to us for advanced continuing education. Simply put, Section 72E says that any money that you put into an insurance contract, I prefer a maximum funded life insurance policy, which means you're not doing it primarily for the death benefit. Uh, that's still critical, but you're doing it for the living benefits. And so you overfund, you put in the most money the Internal Revenue Service will allow, and uh, you put it in as fast as they allow, which is the five years I was alluding to. These are under tax citations, Tefra, Defra, and Tamra. So I have other educational videos that focus on those uh, tax citations in these sections of the code. But see, a maximum funded insurance contract is the only vehicle that accumulates your money tax-free under Section 72E. Section 7702 says, oh, when you go to take money out, it, it talks about the smart way, why it's tax free when you take it out. You don't trigger tax like you do on an IRA or 401k. But when you finally pass away, it blossoms, it increases in value and transfers income tax free under section 101A of the Internal Revenue Code. Do you know? that nothing else that I'm aware of does that. I've had some critics out there say, oh, really? Like, yeah, show me anywhere in the Internal Revenue Code. If you're a CPA listening to this, show me anywhere else in the Internal Revenue Code that uh, you can put money that allows you to accumulate it tax-free, access it tax-free, and when you die, it blossoms and transfers tax-free. And my laser fund, my insurance contract structured correctly and funded properly, have actually averaged 8.2% uh, my entire lifetime. The last 
25 years or so, a 10.07% by using other strategies that we teach in our various classes. So let me put this all together for you in a summary here with the key takeaway. If you have your money in a tax deferred IRA or 401k and you had a million bucks and let's say you needed 100,000 a year, you better be earning 10% in order to do that or you will deplete your nest egg. You'll outlive your money. But if you go withdraw 100,000 out of that million dollar nest egg, if you were earning 10%, that's not all your money. You have to pay tax of 30,000, 35,000. You're only netting you know, 65, 70, 75,000. So you have to keep going back and getting more money. Well, how much do you need to withdraw in a 33% tax bracket between federal and state uh, to net 100? It's 50% more. So you have to pull out 150,000 out of an IRA or 401k, earning 10% to net 100. Do you know that million bucks will be totally gone, drained dry in 11 years. In my laser fund, I pull out 100,000, it's tax free. I get to net 100, I pull out 100, I net 100. So when a lot of people who have IRAs or 401ks are out of money after 11 years, I still have my million. If my uh, wife or myself, if we live to age, um, let's say 90 or 95, another 20 years or 30 years, we will continue to have that 100,000 of income into perpetuity until we die if we live to be 120. Nothing else does that. If you lived another 20 years, 20 years times 100,000 is an extra 2 million. Would you like an extra $2 million better retirement fund? I can show you how to do that. So watch this episode and you'll learn how you can get a free copy of one of my books called The Laser Fund that will teach you how to do all of this. But remember, there ain't no freaking tax in tax-free.